Hey Prescott Valley, my name is Lori Hunt and I am one of your councilwomen and with me today we have John Munderlow and he is the number one water guy in the state of Arizona. He disagrees with me <laughs> but you can ask anybody on the street and they'll tell you that Prescott Valley is fortunate to have the number one water guy. The state actually calls in with questions and I know that's true. Sometimes. Anyway, so we get to talk about water. I'm so excited. I love water. I even wore blue in honor of water. So, John, what are the different names of water here in Prescott Valley and the Greater Area Management? Sorry, the Greater Active Management Area, or otherwise known as AMA. So I'm going to refer to it as AMA. What are the different names for water here? Uh, thanks for asking that. Thanks for having me, Councilmember Hunt. Um, uh, people probably laugh at this question, but it's water is so important to us. We have as many names for water here as probably the Eskimos do for snow. There you go. Uh, so, so it's important. We involved our water um, methodologies or the way we preserve water over time. And with that came these different names. Um, and so in our area, it's important for people to understand we consider groundwater. Uh, that's our primary source of supply but it's different from surface water. It's managed different. There's a different body of laws that govern uh, both uses. Uh, and uh, we have reclaimed water. Uh, that's water that we create as a byproduct of our wastewater treatment process. Um, we have imported supplies, which will be groundwater in the future from a different groundwater basin. We'll talk about the different basins. Uh, and then uh, finally in Arizona, we have a whole different source of water that's called CAP water or Colorado river water. Now we don't have that source here, um, but it's important to know that it's there because we had water rights to the Central Arizona Project Canal at one time. Mm -hmm. The city of Prescott did, I should clarify that. Uh, and that has allowed us access to other sources of water. Very complex process. So this greater AMA area is Prescott, us, Dewey, and Chino Valley, correct? Correct. Okay. Right, so it, so it covers uh, this broader uh, basin that we're in um, and it runs from the mountaintops that you can see from the center of the valley. Glassford Hill is kind of in the middle of it um, and the airport and all of that. So, um, so can I use the term active management area or AMA and aquifer and groundwater kind of interchangeably? So you more or less know. can okay. here. Okay. Um, because this basin is called the Prescott Active Management Area Groundwater Basin. Okay. Uh, it's called that because it's a managed groundwater basin. Some basins in Arizona are not actively managed. Um, and then aquifer, groundwater, groundwater system, those are the same terms. So I'm glad you, you mentioned the active management because there's only five AMAs in the whole state, right? Right. So uh, a lot of the area in Arizona isn't in an active management area, just the very populated areas, correct? That's correct, right. So what are and your numbers? You say most of the people, what are, what are those yeah, numbers? Yeah, uh, and we have a, a map that we'll put up. Um, okay. So Arizona has five of the AMAs, active management areas, like you say, which cover groundwater basins. They cover about 15% of the state, but about 85% of the population lives in those five AMAs. Okay. We're the most northern one and also the smallest. Uh, it incorporates Phoenix all the way down to the uh, border with Mexico. Great. So the, that populated corridor. Great. So what is the size and other specifics about our aquifer? And we have a slide, right? Yes. Slide two? Right, yeah. So the, uh, the slide will show the, the size of the Prescott AMA okay. aquifer. We just talked about basically its geography. Um, and, and I think it's important to note that the aquifer is uh, water contained within uh, sand and gravel and silt. It's called alluvial material, stuff that eroded down from taller, larger mountains, you know, many eons ago. Um, so the water is contained in the little vacant pore spaces between that material. It's about 10% of the total volume. I just want to get that out so people understand that it's not an underground lake. Mm. Even though I think the slide shows my comparison to Lake Pleasant, uh, which is the lake on the other side of the Bradshaw Mountains. It's a large lake. It'd take hours to motorboat across it. Um, and our aquifer contains about two and a half times the water that's in Lake Pleasant. So for people that haven't uh, really uh, a concept of how much water that is, 
I um, converted into terms of football stadiums. Oh, cool. Um, so a lot of people know, you know, and especially since people haven't been able to go to football stadiums and that sort of thing Can I lately. say go Bears? <laughs> okay. Go Bears. So I found easily the, the size of the Dallas Cowboys football stadium. I don't know. I couldn't find the others. Um, so total in our aquifer, we have 9,100 Dallas Cowboy football stadiums of water. Oh, my 9, goodness. Um, okay. Per year, Prescott Valley pumps about 2.4 football wow. stadiums. Um, all throughout the basin, uh, the other users, including us, pump about 7.5 football stadiums. Wow. And about 4.1 football stadiums is recharged to the aquifer through natural processes. So when we get the big rains, not really the monsoon rains, but the wet winters, where we have a lot of um, you know, wet uh, water on the ground, especially in the ephemeral streams, that's when we get our recharge. Great. Um, so I've heard our aquifer called either the Little Chino or the Upper, upper Agua Frio. So which one is it? Because the Prescott AMA is managed by the state as one big water body. And I think it's best to call it an AMA and not all these other little names so people get confused. But there's rivers and other things that are within it. So um, let's get into exactly what state managed means. And we have another slide. Yes. <clears throat> um, first to your, your comment, the Little Chino and the upper aquifer are aquifers contained within the Prescott Active Management Area aquifer. So they're okay. both within the active management area. You can, people use them uh, loosely, interchangeably, um, but just so we understand, um, again, all those names for water. But when I came on council, you said, call it AMA. Yes. And I've been trying to. That's good. Because you're a good yeah. teacher. It, it clears it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, and then as far as how it is actively managed and what, you know, what happened, what transpired, yes, we understand we live in a dry state. A lot of people come here and they're shocked that Arizona's dry. I don't know why, um, but we understand that. Uh, and we've always managed our resources uh, in consideration of this being an arid environment. But in 1980, as the population was growing and we um, had been pumping groundwater systems, groundwater aquifers for about 40 years at that point in time, uh, we were understanding that some of the water levels were dropping and in some places at a pretty fast rate. Uh, so the state legislature created these active management areas, the basins that we talked about, uh, the five basins. Uh, and the 1980 Groundwater Management Act created uh, those active management areas, a whole body of water laws, administrative codes, ad nauseum. Um, they created the Arizona Department of Water Resources. Mm -hmm. This is really important because uh, the Arizona Department of Water Resources, it's a big agency in a big building down in Phoenix, uh, full of legal people and administrative people and hydrologists, they oversee what we do in these active management areas, and they make sure we conform to the law. Um, so a lot of people maybe think that the town council, and you know, sorry to say, you will understand this, mm -hmm. you don't make water laws for our area, right. and you don't even make water laws for our town, because as a town council, we have to adhere to state law. Right. Um, so, uh, again, the town council makes the decisions only within confines of, of state law, including decisions on subdivision growth. Right. Um, so that is another element of the active management code, uh, the groundwater management code, excuse me, is that all subdivisions have to obtain a certificate of assured water supply that they have 100 years of water. And that is a decision that the state makes prior to the town council's approval of uh, uh, the subdivision, the final plat. So I know 1999 is a big water year for us. So when you say they have to show 100 years, those are the projects after 1999 or the projects before? Both. Okay. Both. But what happened in 1999 is the state said in this active management area, that groundwater levels are continuing to decline uh, and that uh, no more permits for new groundwater use would be issued. So up to 1999, if you were a subdivider and you wanted approvals for your 100-year assured water supply, 
uh, the state could grant you access to groundwater. After 1999, that stopped completely. There have been no new subdivisions with new groundwater allocations since then. That's over 20 years. Although people see growth, they see growth along Glassford Hill Road and so on, but those were um, lots that were undeveloped but were permitted that received a groundwater allocation. Right. Yeah. So um, I like, let's talk real briefly about what happened in the 1960s to show that water was here for the people prior to 1999. Because I live in Quailwood, and so I'm before the 1999. And right. a lot of the projects, even still Granville, still building, is pre-1999. Right. So talk just a little bit about that, about uh, how they did the 1960. Yeah, prior to about the mid-70s, there was no requirement for the assured water supply. Um, and so a lot of the core part of Prescott Valley did not receive that uh, uh, assurance. However, when the new law was passed in about 73, the, the subdivision started to have to get those assurances, those 100-year certificates. Uh, but when they did the calculations, they made sure, the Department of Water Resources, they made sure that all the pre-existing commitments were accounted for out of the basin. So de facto, everybody prior to 1999 uh, who was allowed to subdivide received a 100-year certificate, mm -hmm. a 100-year assurance, I should say of water supplies. So that's why when when projects come to council, like I'll use Jasper as an example, and we don't really even talk about water. We can't because once the state, the big kahuna says they have their 100 year supply, we can't argue water because the state is in charge, correct? You can't second guess the state on that. Okay. And Jasper being a post-1999 subdivision uh, had to use a different type of water other than groundwater. Uh, and in this case, they used the reclaimed water. Okay. Uh, the, in one of the supplies that we talked about at the beginning of the segment here. Right, right. And so then they're going to make more reclaimed water, some of which will help us recharge the AMA. Right. Okay. Right. Got it. So, and I think we have a slide on, on how, the, how important reclaimed water is for the town. Um, Am that, I getting ahead of us? <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, it's, it's perfect. I just wanted to put a, a, a kind of a, a, you know, explanation on this because mm -hmm. 65, I think it's really in interesting, 65% of the water we serve, uh, we recycle. Yeah. You know, we get back through the wastewater treatment process and we turn that water into um, high quality effluent, A plus effluent, and we put that back in, into the ground. We yeah. store it in space below ground. Of course, everything's permitted by the Arizona Department of Water Resources. We right. don't do it on our own or without oversight, so on. Right, and it's, it's accounted for separately from the groundwater. It is. Yes, that's very important. It is. Okay. So, a uh, bold statement from me, because I can, I'm a council member, Prescott Valley does not subsidize growth with regard to water, or, or probably or anything else. Anything yeah. else, yeah. So, how, how, uh, how does growth get its water? We talked a little bit about Jasper, um, and those are slides four and five for our technical team here. Do you want to add anything else on that? I got a little bit of a head. Anything else? Well, on I think maybe I got a head too. Okay. So, <laughs> back in sync. Yeah, the, so the reclaimed water um, being kept separate, uh, accounted for separately as we recharge it into that pore space, it's really important to understand that it's an accounting process as much as it is putting wet water in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but when we put <clears throat> a bucket in the ground, uh, that gallon or whatever is accounted for uh, and we can use that then for new growth and it doesn't impact the groundwater supplies. Right. So everybody everybody important. else's water supply is preserved for them. Those, bef those of us before 1999. Right. I want everybody to understand that. So if you need to rewind and re-watch re that, that's very important what John just said. Okay, John, so when people say there isn't enough water because wells are drying up, I like to clarify that they may be talking, what they may be talking about is in the county and more specifically the private wells, usually called exempt wells. What do you have to say about that? <clears throat> well, I think you're spot on. Uh, we don't know of any municipal wells or uh, large supply wells having problems. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, quite clearly they're, they're heavily managed. The small wells, the private wells are called exempt wells because they're exempt from the groundwater code, which also means you're kind of on your own when you decide to go um, kind of outside of the law to drill your own well. It's, it's legal, it's permitted, but you're not managed. Uh, and so a lot of those little wells, um, they're maybe not drilled deep enough, or maybe they're at the edge of the aquifer and there's just not enough supply there. Um, but I think overall, it's a very small percentage of the total. Um, and it just receives a lot of notoriety, so people get concerned. And so in a lot of those, a lot of those wells outside of incorporated jurisdictions don't get regulated and don't get checked as much, and the state does not really govern them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they're not part of the AMA, right? Well, they're in the AMA. They are, and, okay. and they're, But they're not managed as the AMA water resources are for the large providers. Okay. Um, so we have, beyond the day that they're drilled, we have no idea what's going on with them. Uh, the state does not require reporting like they require of the town and the cities. Right. Uh, we, re we report annually what we do. Um, the exempt wells don't report at all. Right, so nobody goes back and checks on them, right. except if you're in the town of Prescott Valley, because we regulate, when they come in for a building permit, they have to apply for a well permit as well, correct? Uh, no, they would still go to the state for their well permit. Okay. Um, but we, it, it's not a good thing to have a lot of exempt wells in your water supply area, uh, in your municipal supply area. <clears throat> we have um, a very small amount. We have a very small amount. Um, we still require, as a, as a matter of uh, getting your building permit, that you pay the fees to okay. hook up to the system and that sort of thing. So it is a discouragement uh, to then go spend the extra money, you know, ten, twelve, twenty thousand dollars to drill an exempt well. Right. So it's better to just hook up because our wells are doing great, and we're going to get into that. Okay. So back to Prescott Valley, my favorite place in the whole world. Okay. There was some miscommunication recently on social media that Prescott Valley was drilling 25 new wells. And so as a councilwoman, I can reassure everybody that uh, at $2 million a well, we don't have the budget. We don't have plans for that uh, now to drill new wells, nor do we have the need for additional wells. So what exactly, correct me if I'm wrong, what exactly do you have to add there? Uh, we have yeah, a th couple slides there, too. That, that was a, just a misunderstood, okay. uh, public, uh, publicized notice by the Department of Water Resources. Uh, the town back in October applied to add an additional permit to our existing wells. Recall that everything we do has to receive a permit of some kind. Um, and so we have all of these wells that are currently permitted and currently existing. And, and we have a, a, a little graph showing a number of our wells in Prescott Valley. And those are the exact wells that were in this permit application. And what it is is just to um, just the permission to call these wells recovery wells, mm -hmm. which means that then we could use these wells to withdraw water that we had recharged at our recharge facilities, mm -hmm. um, and and simply uh, allow for the accounting procedure to occur where um, the water that we pump out, some of it could be recovered water. I know it's very complex, it's a hard subject to get around, but it'd be similar to saying if you had a lake and uh, the owner of the lake would not let you take water out oh, of I it. Oh, I love this analogy. I'm glad you're talking about <laughs> it. So, so and, and you, wanted, you wanted to build a cabin on the far end of the lake, but you couldn't get water out of the lake. Uh, but you negotiated with the owner of the lake. If you poured 100 gallons into one end of the lake, could you take it out of the other end? And, and so the owner of the lake would allow you to do that because there would be no net change right. to the volume in the lake. And, and that's similar to this. Right. So again, that's a great analogy. So no change in the lake. You right. You added from we one end, you took out from the other, no change. And we, just cannot, like, we cannot pump those wells any additional volume than they're already allowed to pump. Right. So um, I'm glad we're talking about our wells. How many wells do we have? Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, 28 or 29. Okay. Yeah. It, and uh, so they're spread throughout our system, mm -hmm. right, as you can see from the graph. So um, I want to talk about the great news we got after we rested a well for a year. Um, right. And I know that has to do maybe with some of what we talked about, but also uh, my question that I get a lot as a council member, how do we avoid running out of water? Okay. 
<laughs> so the first thing about the wells, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we had developed new wells, brought some old wells back online that had been mothballed, it allowed us to rest a well field that we had pumped heavily for the past 10 years. Um, because it was a cheap or least costly, I guess, source of water um, during the recession and all of that. Um, so we rested the, uh, the central well field, we call it. That's the well field we have over by the, between the high school and the tank farm in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see from the graph, we've seen our water levels uh, come back within 10 feet of when we first started that, uh, that pumping from that well field. It's an amazing amount of recovery. So what happens, so the public understands, when you pump water from a well, it has to take water from out of the aquifer and water will only flow downhill because of gravity mm -hmm. into the well. It's called a cone of depression. So think of a, think of a funnel, mm -hmm. right? And your well is in the middle. So as you pump, you have to create a cone of depression. That's the only way water will flow to the well. Um, but when we stop pumping, the water levels come back up naturally. And this was a great amount of recovery. Um, we've pumped um, for 20 years out of this well field um, billions of gallons of water. Wow. That's awesome. So it was higher than when we took it down after it rested. Uh, not quite as high. Okay, but but, close. but it's still trending upwards. Yeah. Um, you know, we won't know exactly. We'll probably have to turn that well field back on as the summer heats up. Great, great. So that's good news. It really is really good it, news. It's awesome news. So it shows, it shows how um, having additional wells that allow us to rest certain well fields, um, you know, preserves the water in the aquifer. Um, but it is important to note that overall we do pump more water and we are not just Prescott Valley but all of the users in this basin pump mm -hmm. more water out than is recharged every year. Um, and so that's a condition called groundwater mining. We need to address that. The state legislature has said we need to address that by 2025. And um, so, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big challenge. It's not an immediate emergency. Right, the water levels are dropping that. about a foot per year across the basin. Uh, we have a lot of feet to go, but we don't want to be doing this forever. Right, right. And I love that subject too, and we're going to get to that. So did we answer how do we avoid running out of water? We're getting um, there. We're getting there. That's okay. a, it's, it's, yeah, it's a tough subject. Um, Prescott Valley has a, a three-legged approach, um, and it's a, an approach that's, that's a very strong one. Um, number one is water conservation. Um, our community is very conservative uh, with their water use. Uh, we have some charts that we'll put up that show the uh, gallons per capita day that the community uses, and we're, we're below about 100 gallons per person per day. And what that is is that's the total volume of water we use in the community divided by the total population. And so it's, it's going not, down, right? It's, it's trending down, okay. definitely. Good, because right. of conservation. Thank you, everyone. Yes, absolutely. Keep up the good and work. And the next graph we have, the next slide shows um, how we've been able to um, conserve water yet see the population grow. So we've seen Prescott Valley grow over the past 15 years by about 50%, um, but we do not pump more water out of the ground than we did 15 years ago. And that's significant. Uh, so water conservation is good for all of us, mm -hmm. uh, preserves water for all of us. Uh, the second leg of our stool is the recharge program. Okay. Uh, reclaiming that water that was formerly considered a waste product and discarded, um, but for the past 20 years, the town has taken that water, put it in those recharge basins, put it in the recharge um, berms in the Alwafria River, and raised water levels significantly in that area. Um, so that's continually recycling that. So a lot of good news. Yes, and the third is that imported supply yeah. that I'm sure you're itching to that talk we're, about. Yeah, because that's yeah. one of my favorite topics too. So you've, ta you've uh, talked about our recharge facility and we toured it, my husband and I toured it, and it's a great place to go, maybe not on a date, but it's a great place to go and tour. Um, and we give tours, right? Yes. So that's on our website, go to pvaz.net right. to um, learn more about touring the um, sewage treatment plant. Right. And it's very exciting. Okay, so in closing, the Big Chino project would be a good opportunity for us to be able to reach safe yield. And that's a 2025 where we're, everything's equal. We're not losing the foot a year. And recoup, recoup over $11 million that we paid for the Big Chino Ranch property. 
right. get that back in our town budget, uh, budget reserves and that the town, okay, so I said that, sorry, and then get the project paid for by future developments, some of which is already designated in the general plan 2025, so we're not talking about real future growth that isn't on the books, and then use that effluent that they would create, so like Jasper, we talked about Jasper creating the effluent, um, generated off their new, new homes to recharge our AMA so that we're at safe yield and we're not dropping that one foot a year. So um, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better. One I, of my I will, favorite projects. I will projects. add one thing though, that this isn't just our plan. This was uh, proposed and initiated by the Arizona Department of Water Resources in what they call management plans. Uh, they did the math, they did the modeling, and they determined that the only way we can reach safe field is to bring water in from the Big Chino. And we have water rights to do so. These were granted to us by the state and they're on the books in the state statutes, ARS 45555E, anybody wants to look them up. So we're trying to do this in partnership with the city of Prescott, so. So, um, that's great. Uh, so there's all, it's all pluses for the Big Chino not just for new development that's already in the general plan, but for us that have been here, you know, prior to 1999, we get our water recharged. That's right, because everybody that has the pre-99 water is contributing to groundwater mining. Right. Um, so this is a way to put the cost of safe yield on new growth. So again, this is Lori Hunt, councilwoman, with my friend John, our water expert, and please, please share this with your friends. Thank you.